Hey everybody, welcome back to Adventures of Spackman, the channel that brings you DIY gear, camping adventures, backpacking adventures, and all around outdoor adventures. If you like that sort of thing, think about hitting that subscribe button for more videos. Today we're talking about the 3FUL gear tribal stove and the pros and cons of it. Stick around and let's see if I recommend it for you. I, I don't recommend it. All right, the first pro is a storage bag. It is made out of a 1000D nylon. It has YKK zippers on the outside, as well as YKK zippers on this little pocket. This little pocket is also a pro of this bag too. I kind of like it. It stores all of the chimney supports and wing nuts. Inside the bag, there are Velcro straps that hold the stove body into the bag. It also has Velcro straps to hold the stove body. And that's about it for the bag. I do like this bag. All right, so moving on from the bag, another pro of this stove is it's pretty lightweight. It comes in at 5.42 pounds or 2,460 grams. Now for being a hot tent stove, that's relatively on the light side, especially for stainless steel. Now remember, this is stainless steel. This is not titanium. The next pro would definitely be that it's budget friendly. It comes in around $200, 200 US dollars. You can buy it directly from 3FUL gear for about 150, but then you have to pay shipping. I bought it off the of AliExpress for 200 and that was with free shipping. It's pretty much the same because shipping I want to say was around $50. Another pro is the pack size. In the storage bag, it is about 17 inches long, 10 inches wide, and about two and a half inches thick. That's pretty packable for being a budget-friendly stainless steel stove. Another pro, this glass window. It's, it's just plain cool to have the light coming out of your stove into your hot tent. It's, it's pretty cool. It adds to the ambiance of sleeping in a tent in the winter, and it... It just adds light to your tent. So that's definitely a pro. So the last pro I want to mention is that it was just fun to use this stove. It's lightweight, it's small, and by small I mean it's it's small. But it, it's just fun. It was, it was just fun to use this stove. It was so small and dinky, it was just fun. So let's move on to the cons now. So as you can tell by the title or the thumbnail of this video, there's one big con to this stove. The door. Now... My last outing with this stove was with my youngest daughter. It was her first time winter camping, hot tenting, and in the middle of the night, at 3 a.m. in the morning, this door opened up by itself, releasing carbon monoxide into our tent. The dampener was about three quarters shut, like this. So, I know that I didn't leave the door open when I closed it the last time, or else my tent would, our tent would have filled up with smoke. So at some point, the stove warped so bad, the door had popped open and released carbon monoxide into my tent. Our tent. Our tent. That's right. My daughter was in there. I have a little bit of footage of that, and I'm going to play it now. And I just want to say that thankfully I had a carbon monoxide detector, and it woke me up. But here's that footage now. So much weight on me. Yeah, that's a big sleeping bag. All right, Lila's in her bed. She's got the negative 20 Field of Streams bag. Oh, and she's waiting for the tooth fairy tonight. She lost a tooth this morning right there. So put it underneath her pillow. So we're, we're going to watch a movie, and we'll see you guys in the morning. Good night. Good night. Mother saved her life. Can't make this shit up, guys. Oh, Tooth Fairy. <laughs> And that's why I have a carbon monoxide detector. <laughs> All right. 
We're back down to zero, it says. Yeah, I'm freezing. I'm gonna close this. Close this up. Yes. Yes, it is the middle of the night, Lila. Carbon monoxide detector just went off. Uh, we had carbon monoxide. <laughs> it is still producing it for some reason. So when the the carbon monoxide detector was right there. When it went off, I reached over to grab it. When I reached over to grab it, my cot tipped. Sleeping bag, touch that, and melted my sleeping bag. Yes, it touched the wood stove. So I was up an hour and 45 minutes ago stoking up the fire. I stoked up the fire, closed the door, I made sure the door was shut, and it's not something I did. Then the carbon monoxide detector went off. The door on the stove opened i didn't do that that was the stove fire open the door and that's why you have a carbon monoxide detector you don't know you just don't know what's gonna happen please be safe out there i've let the tent air out for about 25 minutes now lila's back to sleep carbon monoxide detector's down to zero now oh that's scary guys All right, so that's some pretty scary stuff there, right? I mean, we almost didn't wake up, right? I mean, if that carbon monoxide detector didn't go off, there's a possibility that you wouldn't be seeing this video. But the problem is from this door. It has a lot of play in it. Well, well let me get you a little closer. All right, a little more. A little closer. All right, that's too close. Back up, back up, back up. All right, so the first problem... When this is all the way down, it lifts the door up. So when the door falls down, it almost opens this by itself. Right there. I mean, a stove that's meant to go in your tent should not be able to do that without you opening this latch. It just shouldn't do that. It shouldn't be able to pop open just by playing with it. Now that is my biggest concern with this stove. Somebody going to sleep at night, not carrying a carbon monoxide detector, and then their door opens. That could be death right there. Another con with the door, I've noticed as the stove heats up, this gets harder and harder to open and close. It's not a real big concern, but it is a con in my book. I usually leave two of them open anyways. I never really mess with that much because I found that the sweet spot was with two open. But it gets, it gets very tough to move around when it's hot. Now, the main stove body, the thicker parts, the top and the backs, are made of 0.6 millimeter stainless steel. The rolled steel body is made of 0.2 millimeter stainless steel. So it's very thin. My next biggest con is the thickness of the steel. I understand they wanted to make this as lightweight as possible, but it's so lightweight that it's, I don't think it will hold up to long-term use. I have used this stove for seven burns, seven fires. So seven times out in my tent, I have used this stove and the stove body is warped pretty darn bad. Let me show you if I can get this off. Now, I don't know how much, well, there is a dent. It kind of went back from me rolling it up, but now after unrolling it, you saw that it dented again. Let's see if I can show you guys. Oh yeah, you can see this huge dent here, huge dent here, huge dent here, and this dent here.
Now, like I said, this is after seven times using this stove. Seven times. So is that really budget friendly if it's gonna be almost almost not usable at this point? Or is it usable? I'm gonna have to modify that. Which, I mean, for a $200 stove, you might need to modify it to make it <laughs> perfect. But that's beyond, that's besides the point. But this stove body denting, I am really concerned with how well this will hold up with long-term use. There is a Tribal Stove 2.0 out now. It just came in last week. I had ordered it before I found out about the defects in this door. But we'll find out in a later video if this one is better than this one or if it has the same flaws. Now with the biggest con being the door, a side effect of use may be death. That's gonna just about do it for the pros and cons of the 3FUL Gear Tribal Stove. If you like this sort of thing, think about hitting that subscribe button. I'll have a link to it right here in the middle here. If you haven't seen my heat powered hot tent ceiling fan, I'll have a link to that video right here. And on this side is a video that YouTube recommends just for you. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.